Tradcast Express. Express. Tradcast Express, it's Thursday, April 4th, 2024. Happy Easter to all Catholics. Yes, all Catholics believe that Jesus Christ truly rose from the dead. And that would not include, for example, Cardinal Gerhard Ludwig Müller, who was prefect of the Congregation for the Destruction of the Faith from 2012 to 2017. For years, Müller has been presented by the Novus Ordo Press as some kind of lion of conservatism and orthodoxy, simply because he opposes some of Pope Francis's more obvious deviations from Roman Catholicism. You know, especially with regard to issues pertaining to the Fifth, Sixth, and Ninth Commandments. But disagreeing with divorce and remarriage, sodomy and abortion is not enough to make a man a Catholic. To be a Catholic, it is necessary to oppose these evils, but certainly not sufficient. As Pope Benedict XV said, Such is the nature of Catholicism that it does not admit of more or less, but must be held as a whole or as a whole rejected. And that's from the encyclical letter At Beatissimi, published November 1st, 1914, paragraph 24. Now, of course, Cardinal Muller does profess belief in the resurrection of Christ, But when you take a close look at what he teaches about it, you find that his understanding of the resurrection of Christ is not what was taught by the Roman Catholic Church until the death of Pope Pius XII in 1958. Donald Atwater's Catholic Dictionary, 3rd edition, 1958, defines the resurrection of Christ as, quote, the reanimation of the body in the tomb by the soul of Christ on the morning of the third day after his death, unquote, and then elaborates, quote, Christ's body, though it has entered a glorified existence, forever remains a true material, physical human body, numerically identical with the body crucified on Calvary, unquote. That is the Catholic belief. Now, it's clear that since that is what Christ's resurrection means, if video cameras had been around back then, then obviously the resurrected Christ could have been recorded on video. Not so for Cardinal Muller. Listen to what he writes. Quote, A running camera would not have been able to make an audiovisual recording of either the Easter manifestations of Jesus in front of his disciples, nor of the resurrection event, which at its core is the consummation of the personal relation of the Father to the incarnate Son in the Holy Ghost. In contrast to human reason, animals and technical devices are not capable of a transcendental experience, and thus also lack the ability to be addressed by the word of God through perceptible phenomena and signs. Only human reason in its inner unity of categoricality and transcendentality is determinable by the Spirit of God to enable it to perceive in the sensory cognitive image triggered by the manifestation event the person reality of Jesus as the cause of this sensory mental cognitive image. Unquote. That's my translation from his book Katholische Dogmatik, Catholic Dogmatics, 2010 edition, page 300. The latest edition is from 2016 to my knowledge, but I'm quoting from the 2010 edition because that's the one I have. And I'm using my own translation here because most of the book has not yet been officially released in English, including this portion, and that's not surprising because translating Muller is a nightmare, as you probably agree, given what I just read to you. Muller 
just writes heaps of gobbledygook that sound extremely erudite and deep, but will ultimately leave the reader only perplexed and bewildered, and certainly not enlightened or edified. Or would you say that what you just heard increases either your understanding of or your devotion to the resurrected Christ? Didn't think so. I'm including a link in the show notes to a Novos Ordo Watch blog post from, uh, I believe, 2016 that contains all the documentation for this, including a scan of the original German straight from the book so you can verify all this for yourself. But wait, there's more. On page 301, Muller says this, quote, The realization of the reality of the transcendental event is triggered by the Easter manifestations. The belief of the disciples is the historically verifiable sign that points to the Easter event and through which the Easter event becomes accessible, unquote. Now, note well, Muller here claims that what is historically verifiable fact is not the resurrection or the appearance of the risen Christ per se, testified to by the disciples, but merely the disciples' belief in the resurrection and appearance of the risen Christ. It is not their historical testimony regarding historical fact that makes the truth of the resurrection accessible to us, but merely their belief in a transcendental event that a running camera would not have been able to capture. Over 100 years ago, Pope St. Pius X warned us against this modernist distortion of tradition, saying, quote, Tradition, as understood by the modernists, is a communication with others of an original experience through preaching by means of the intellectual formula. Unquote. That's from the encyclical Pascendi Dominici Gregis, number 15. Now look, for 1900 years, Catholics did not find it terribly difficult to understand what was meant by the bodily resurrection of Christ. Our blessed Lord's soul was reunited to his body, the very same body that had hung upon the cross and was afterwards lying in the tomb. Being resurrected, this body is now immortal and glorified, no longer subject to pain, although he did choose to retain the five principal wounds in his hands, feet, and side in proof of his identity. It was precisely to demonstrate the reality of his resurrection that Christ did not simply appear, but ate real food with his apostles and allowed, even encouraged them, to touch him, especially St. Thomas, the doubting apostle. But what happens to all that in Cardinal Muller's theology? It just dissolves. Something about blah, blah, inner unity, blah, blah, transcendental experience, blah, blah, sensory cognitive image. My eye! For a refreshingly clear and doctrinally sound antidote to Muller's gobbledygook, let's listen to an explanation of the conditions of the risen Christ given by Monsignor Joseph Clifford Fenton in 1940. Quote, One essential feature of the story witnessed by the apostles is to be found in the characteristics of the risen Jesus. We must not forget that the disciples recognized their master just as truly as any men have ever recognized one of their fellows. At the same time, they saw that his body was radically in a different condition from that which had hitherto characterized it. Previously, the body of Jesus had been amenable to suffering. Now the Apostle Thomas could put his finger into the frightful wounds of the hands and could bring his hand into the open side without causing pain or distress to the Master. Now Jesus appeared and disappeared as he would. The locked door of the upper room remained as it was. The apostles gathered without Jesus, and while the door stayed locked, he came in to them. When he had completed the instructions he wished to give the disciples at Emmaus, 
he vanished from their sight. In other words, Jesus of Nazareth, risen from the grave, manifested a complete mastery over the laws which govern the created universe. Those whom Jesus had raised from the dead previous to his own resurrection did not manifest these qualities at all. Quadratus could very well assert that people whom Jesus had brought back to life had lived in his own time, but the implication is, of course, that finally they died. Jesus was the first to return to life glorious and immortal. His return and the qualities he manifested both constitute overwhelmingly ample evidence that the doctrine which he offered to the world as divine revelation actually was what he claimed it to be. Unquote. That was Father Joseph Clifford Fenton from his book, We Stand with Christ, pages 352 to 353. It's uh, been republished since, but under a different title. It is now called Laying the Foundation, and there it's uh, found on pages 379 and 380, and you can find a link to this book in the show notes. So yes, the entire credibility of the Christian religion rests on the truth of the resurrection of Christ, as St. Paul himself tells us, quote, And if Christ be not risen again, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain, unquote. That's from his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 14. So, given how Muller undermines the resurrection of our Lord, how credible is the Catholic religion if we go by his theology? It's not based on the historical fact of the resurrection. It's based on a belief based on an experience. But wait, I have still more. On page 303, Muller tops it off with this. Quote, whether the women's visit to the tomb in the early Easter morning and the discovery that the body of Jesus is no longer there was a historical occurrence in the manner portrayed does not need to be decided here. It's possible that this narrative reflected a veneration of the tomb by the community of Jerusalem. Unquote. Man, when these neo-modernists are done with their theology, there is nothing left of the Catholic faith. By the way, do you know how Muller got the job of chief guardian of orthodoxy in the Vatican in the first place? He was appointed to it by Benedict XVI in 2012. And when his first five-year term as prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith was over in 2017, Francis did not renew it and instead appointed someone else. Because for Francis, Muller was way too orthodox. <coughs> Tratcast Express is a production of Novos Ordo Watch. Check us out at tratcast.org. And if you like what we're doing, please consider making a tax-deductible contribution at novosordowatch.org slash donate.